You might recall that on December 23rd, I said this. You can see the chicken coop up there. We've done uh, an okay job of winterizing the coop. Well, surprise, a week later, the tarp roof was flooded. With any more rain or snow threatening to bring the whole thing down, it needed to come off. But first, we needed to bail some water and remove the guy lines, and that's exactly what Luke did. These knots I put in here are called a um, taut line hitch. I learned them in Boy Scouts. They're perfect for these. Unfortunately, no matter how tight you get this tarp, the water's gonna pool without some type of frame or something in it. So, but these are really cool knots because you can tighten them as after the fact. We've decided to take our chances with the open top, trusting that the chickens will stay inside their coop in rough weather, and Luna thinks it's a done job. That afternoon, we found that the neighbor had left us some apples, and with that, we set out. So we're coming up on the uh, Clear Creek Cave that we discovered while taking AD on a walk. And uh, we're gonna check it out, see what it's all about. See if there's any treasures inside. Oh, he stopped, he's a little scared. Handy flashlight. We're gonna check out, see what it's all about in here. What interests me is this cool, like, old tin light here. It's kind of like, uh, like there's mining going on in here or something. We'll see how far I want to go. Whew. That goes back pretty far, and oh boy. All right, bismillah. Whoa, okay. I hope you guys can see what's going on in here. So this is definitely a mine because the uh, it's very square looking. I wish you guys could see. It goes pretty far back, I would say like 20, 30 feet, and then it looks like it takes a left turn. Now this is all water here though, so that'd be pretty gross to go in. But yeah, this is a mine, I think. I mean, like, let's take a look at this light here. <clears throat> yeah, that's an interesting light. What is that? I just found a lot. It's like there's gin in here or something. Let me get out of here, inshallah. Uh, I'm crawling out. I'm gonna... We survived. Not sure about gin, but Camp One is right here in Placerville, the heart of California's gold country. Old abandoned mines are everywhere. A little bit of digging suggests that we might have found the old Wentz claim. Not sure, but most of these mines are now on private property anyhow. So we walked back home, ending our day with the goats outside to greet us. Hey, Coleman, good morning, AD. How you doing, buddy? This was the last day of 2023, and the goats have been taking tons of minerals. Not sure why, but I asked my goat mentor, Lizzie, about it, and she said to give them as much as they'll take. Which is how we do it when AD wants some love. He really is the linchpin in this whole livestock operation, and we are so grateful for all of his hard work the reciprocal affection between man and dog is such an amazing thing, subhanAllah. Letting the goats out later that afternoon, they had no idea that we would be surprising them again with the abundance of leftover fall apples. they weren't the only ones surprised. Aisha brought it to our attention that the chickens who have not been laying in their uh, nesting boxes here actually have been laying. We just didn't realize it. 
they were laying in this brooding box. I'll try to get a better angle here so that you can see that. It turns out we've got way more eggs than we were counting on. That evening, it was time for Aisha to strain and decant her berry basil shrub syrup, a drinking vinegar that had been macerating for several days. A little too late for my first sip, but I'll be getting into it tomorrow for sure. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. First day of 2024. Luna has been more adventurous lately, following us outside as we get our chores done and just generally exploring. She won't come anywhere near the dog and goat pen though, running off into the forest as we tend to the other animals, only to meet up with us later on the way back inside. which felt to me like a good time to sample Aisha's most recent shrub, and I found her roasting peppers for a salsa she planned to make the next day. What you do is add some of the shrub syrup to your seltzer, and then you take it over to your cat and enjoy a nice sip in the winter sun together. Well, I thought it was pretty much over for the garden, but all of this late season sunshine is really doing wonders for our cabbage, Got some daikon radish over here. Oh, that's looking good. Even got some lettuce standing at attention here. It's a big surprise. But maybe the biggest surprise on this first day of the new solar year was the goats deciding that they wanted to go along with AD for our fair weather walk. It's not something that has happened before, and it was so cool to watch them climb and run and just be goats out there in the wilderness. It was just me and AD the next day, and we finished our evening with some of Aisha's fresh salsa verde before waking up to another surprise. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Our first snow of the season. The winter has been surprisingly mild so far, and while this snow was not going to last, it does hint at things to come. And this week's surprises were not over. Folks, we have more than one rooster. Aisha's infiltrated the coop to confirm her suspicion. Three roosters means that two will likely end up in a pot sooner than later. Good morning, AD. We're coming up on seven months and these kids are still nursing, though I suspect it's more for comfort than for nutrition. We're hoping to train these little guys into pack goats over the years, but for now, we're just working to build that trust with lots of love. While I worked the animals, Luke was in town getting in some off-season climbing at the gym. And when he wrapped his session, he hit up the pump track for a circuit or two while I chased AD and the goats back into their paddock.
Nightfall brought one final surprise when we opened a package addressed to Dustin Tribe. Now this morning, we get to see a bit about how goat society works. Little man has to give up his food to the Alpha, Trouble, and her two kids, Halo and Patches. Switching things up only makes Trouble more curious as, once again, she puts little man off to make sure that she and her kids get the best there is. They'll all eat, but the subordinates need to be patient. Something that Luke can teach us over at the skate park. It's a sport that I, I grew up doing and it's, it's a great way to exercise. And one thing, one thing that it teaches me um, that's really important is patience. And I think patience is one of the most important things you can have in this world. Uh, and I think uh, having strong patience in skating, you know, oh, you do a trick over and over and over and you hurt yourself a little bit and you, you want to give up, but you have that determination and that patience to land that trick. And once you do it, it's the most rewarding feeling. And I think that translates to, you know, uh, our connection with Allah. It took a lot of tries. A lot of these tricks maybe you'll see on social media or an escape video or something. It's like, oh, you just did that. But you don't see the 100 uh, failed attempts before that. So nobody is good at the fir at first. Nobody is. I remember my first time learning how to skate. And it was just you fall. Everyone else is doing cool things around you. You feel like you're not, you're not up to par. But you know, you get there. When you, when you show your patience, you're rewarding. Not only did he land his trick, but Allah's reward came in the form of leather slippers sent by one of you anonymously. But of all the rewards, of all the surprises this week, this one had to be the best. <laughs>